All right, so we're live then, I believe. Are we? I think we are, yeah, we are. So, yeah, this is the AHGL match for IGN versus Cerner, which we've just been kind of pulled in on the last second to cast. I think we'll also be doing another one later on. Uh, and picks and bans are underway in chat. I am joined today by Pulse. Hello. It's a good day. It's a good day. And first ban is TF, actually, followed up qu fairly quickly by Olaf and Malphite. Talk me through those. Yes, indeed. So, TF, just great sort of map presence with that ultimate when he hits six. His lane phase isn't bad either. He has great wave clear. Uh, there's not too much to say on TF, really. It's just really his synergy with uh, his lanes and just increases your ability to gank in that roaming phase. So, uh, the Olaf ban, again, he's super strong top with probably in, in, in you know, the top sort of ten top laners. But, I don't know, it's an interesting ban. You don't usually see Olaf being banned out. It's usually, you know, the big jacks and not so much Irelia anymore after season 3 hit with the item changes and just how she's kind of fell into the rest of the picks. Malphite makes a lot of sense as a band because his initiates are just second to none uh, apart from like Amumu or any anything like that. Great in, in AoE team compositions and follow-ups from the rest of the team. It's just it's super strong in the jungle or even top lane very very difficult to push out and again with Cho'Gath, much for the same reasons heavy ganking jungler and really really difficult to push out that top lane just because an unstoppable wall of health. Yeah, and one thing I actually I like about the, the Olaf ban right now is that we're currently in the League of Warmogs. Warmogs, Warmogs armor is just a massive wall of health, and Olaf is the character for building health, other than maybe Bear, because um, obviously his W scales off it, he gets free resistances, his whole kit is just suited to building as much health as possible, and getting a Warmogs first on, on Olaf makes you this unstoppable mid-game powerhouse if you've had any decent amount of farm makes it really really hard to play anything vaguely not not very mobile if, if you are not very mobile and there is an Olaf with with uh, Warmogs and you only have one item yourself you're probably gonna die and it's probably gonna be painful and fast yeah, the laning phase just <laughs> becomes horrible to lane again. If, if Olaf scales well, it will just start stacking Warmogs, and there's nothing you can do. I'm probably predicting a Warmogs nerf some point in the near future, if not just, you know, like a gold increase, because right now it's just way too efficient. Resistances don't really matter too much in the moment because of all the res uh, the armor penetration and magic penetration changes. You might as well just stack health and be better off. So, as, as the matter evolves, we could, you know, see the return of, like, Cogmore, but again, you need to form these compositions around them, so we'll, we'll see how this turns out. Yeah, indeed. I'm sort of wondering what they're going for, though, with these bands here. Um, banning out, banning out TF and banning out Cat, I can see, they're kind of, there's kind of a theme going on there. I mean, Twisted Fate, obviously, is a great roaming ganker, and Katarina is a pretty strong roaming ganker, too. They transition very differently, I and mean, then Katarina becomes this team fight powerhouse looking for the resets and can, you know, single handedly kill everyone on the team. But uh, TF TF transitions more into a kind of poke and generally just that a walking stun uh, after a certain point. I mean obviously he still has quite a lot of burst, but he, he's not the same monster that Katarina can become. Um, and Malphite obviously I guess they just wanted to shut out that hard engage and that ability to shut down so many different top lanes. It's it's hard to play against Malphite if you are the wrong pick because there's no real counterplay. You just if you try and hit him, he is going to slow your attack speed and then he's going to punch you back and you're going to lose because your attack speed is slowed. So you can try and bait it out, but it's it's very difficult to to win that kind of matchup. So I can sort of see why they banned that out. And actually the same kind of thing for Karzix. I guess people just don't like playing against Katarina and Karzix. It's the whole chump reset kill burst combination thing. Well, yeah, so. I mean, the scary thing is you get one kill and then everyone else dies. And that's a problem with Katarina particularly because her bases are not bad. You can afford to build a pretty tank on her as well. And even if she has a bad laning phase, she's always going to be relevant because if she picks up one kill, gets one reset, you've just doubled your damage output and it just keeps expanding. And it, just the fact that if you manage to get one kill, no matter really how far back you are, you know, obviously there is a certain point, but you can always become relevant again and that's just really really frustrating to play against yeah I think what people have forgotten or didn't realize in the change between old Katarina and new Katarina is the introduction of her W which is an AoE 
and it has a pretty decent AP ratio, it has a pretty decent AD ratio too, but that's kind of irrelevant. Uh, and it has a pretty decent base damage. But most importantly of all, it has no casting animation. So if you get a reset and you kill someone and it resets, you can just do it instantly. And you can actually do that over and over and over again in an incredibly short amount of time with Shunpo and Sinister Steel, just repeatedly doing it, bouncing between people. Um, <laughs> and apparently a joke in Kazadin. Ka Ka no. I I don't see it. I the well known see Baron. Yeah, the well known Kazadin. The void. Wait, actually, they're very similar thematically. Yeah, they are. I, I just want Ryan to create a skin now with like Kazadin with Kazakh's head and wings. To be fair, their head shapes aren't that different. Like Kazadin has like, some slightly like, elongated. It's lovely. It? This. But anyway, Ezreal Parrot pickups. Um, so it's, we've pretty much seen the bot lane now. It's Leona Draven against Ezreal Tarek, and that's going to be really aggressive. Tarek and Leona both kind of play the same way in lane. Tarek is going to want to jump onto Draven. He's going to want to land the stun, get the shatter. Ezreal is not going to be quite as all-in as Draven, but he's going to be looking to really follow up from that shatter combo, that burst combo, uh, especially once he hits six and gets his ult. Huge amount of burst coming out from both lanes. Leona and Draven, obviously, I think maybe their burst will pick up a little bit sooner. They're from about level three. Um, uh, but, you know, it's going to be it's gonna be fairly brutal. And Tarek can do... Um, Tarek can do a little bit to kind of hold off that uh, that fear, you know, that, that burst combination but by stunning Leona mid-combo or just stunning Draven while... Ezreal is stunned, because obviously if Draven is stunned while the owner is in mid-combo, he can't get those procs from the sunlight. But it's um, it's certainly it's certainly an interesting ma matchup, and it'll probably be one to watch, because I would I would be very surprised if they hit level, you know, if the towers go down without anyone dying. Yeah, I mean, both of them like to be hella aggressive, as you pointed out, and also the nice synergy between Draven and Leona, I'm not sure if you pointed this out, but uh, the bleed from Draven's passive basically procs every single uh, sunlight stack of Leona's passive, so you're getting the full damage potential out, and in, in a small engagement, that is quite a significant amount of burst damage, and it's more than you think it is, because Leona's passive does a ton of damage. I seriously underestimated it when I was first looking at Leona, and it's absolutely mental. So the next pickups will be Shen and Vlad. Yeah, Shen... Shen's just a generally all-around solid top laner. If you don't know what you're up against the top lane, you're generally not going to go too far wrong with Shen. I don't think there's anyone that can really make Shen regret being in the lane. There are <clears throat> there are characters that can do fairly well against him. You know, there are characters that can farm up that you don't really want to get farmed. You know, you can pick an Aurelia or a Jax or someone like that, or an Olaf. Um, but but Shen is always going to be useful. He's always going to have that split pushing presence. He's always going to be tanky. He's always going to have that global presence. Vlad, interesting. Um, I. They might want to run him mid. Uh, that could actually be quite valid, quite a valid pick with so many of these kind of bursty assassins that Vlad doesn't really like to deal with actually banned out. So, you know, might see something uh, interesting out of that. It could also be Shen jungle, though. So having those picks, those kind of agnostic picks, I suppose you could say, um, where, you know, they could go in either lane or, or, or they could even swap up top and mid, put Shen mid and Vlad, Vlad top. But... You know, you could, um, <clears throat> you could. Uh, it's, it's an interesting set of picks because it's just hard to tie down where they're going. Yeah, and it's fairly flexible and quite valid to do so because it's just like, well, okay, well, what are you going to pick? Now they have to think about it. It's like, well, who do we want where? And then they can easily just swap it up as well. And the nice thing with Shen is you can only swap it for so long before Shen gets his teleport, and then it just doesn't matter what you do. So, yeah, I, I quite like that at the moment. Again, when you haven't had another pick count coming just yet, again, Shen could also be in the jungle. But uh, I was a sick of Vlad, actually, but I'm not entirely sure what his clear's like. I, I, I actually saw a jungle Vlad once. It didn't go well. It was not. Don't jungle Vlad. Just don't. Maybe you could you could jungle from like level five, maybe if you wanted, if you were really desperate and you already had a revolver because you were getting fed and you just hated laning with a passion. But that would be a very strange way to play. <laughs> uh, and we're actually now seeing a rumble and a kale pickup. 
Indeed. So Rumble is interesting. We haven't seen a Rumble pit for quite a while. He's he's basically a lame bully. He's always been a lame bully. And if he falls behind, it's not super fun times, but he does have his taser to try and just keep himself in the lane, try and uh, get some harass down, try and mostly farm with it. Kale, again, could be support, could be top, maybe Rumble mid, actually. Uh, Rumble does fairly well against Vlad. And Kale... Is just super, super lane bully once again. Really looking to punish them in that laning phase. And Kale, again, has really nice transition. You generally want to go for that Infinity Edge first, get a bit of attack speed, maybe go for the AD carry build. And with the ultimate, you can just afford to do so. Very, very gimmicky though, because the auto attack is quite dodgy at the best of times. But if Kale gets rolling, it can be quite nasty. Well, I mean, at the moment, AP mid Kale is is very much flavor of the month. Um, it's I've, I've played against it a few times. She actually does an alarming amount of burst. Really, I mean, I was playing LeBlanc on my Smurf, and I was up against an AP Kale mid, and I was just in this horrible situation where I could try and burst her, but she would probably ult it, and I could try and trade with her without using my ult, but I would actually lose the trades, even though I was LeBlanc with that huge early game burst damage and the silence. Uh, all she needed to do was activate the E and hit the Q in, and uh, and I would lose the trade, and it was just really, really painful. And she actually has pretty good scaling as well, from what I've seen, just a lot of AoE damage. And there's also the fact that her reduction on her passive is now a lot more valuable due to the way um, they changed around the um, penetration and uh, armor reduction percent uh, versus flat in Season 3. And it looks like we are now going to be going into a draft pickup. Is it tournament draft? Yes, it is. So there could be pauses. And they will ban random champions. Who in are before, we going to choose? In before they ban out the wrong champions. <laughs> I've, I've, I've seen it happen. Mm, yeah, uh, then we're saving end. I, 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 I was hoping for TSN. I mean, no, I wouldn't oh, ever yeah. wish for that one again. They could have... Uh, MTG? Like, Magic the Gathering, maybe? Uh, maybe. MT... ZZZ. I'm not sure if that's uh, a reference for anything. Zebra or they just, they just like the letters. Zebra yeah. zigzagging. Ze mm. Yep. 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 <laughs> yeah, well, we have these pickups coming in, fairly slow to lock them in. Uh, we do have a ton of honorable opponents from IGN. So, you know, no matter how this game goes, they're going to be honourable. It's true. Um, as long as they're not, like... There are people out there, some would call them Pulse. Some would call them Pulse. I mean, what? Who may have acted in an, a frankly unnaturally saccharine way in order to get an honour back. <laughs> no. Um, I, believe, I believe we have referred to them as uh, people... Ladies of the night, uh, well, a synonym for that. Um, That's a Chupala. <laughs> that video, you, you still haven't up, even uploaded that video. <laughs> this is just Soon, a TM. bizarre in-joke where yeah. I wasn't sure. Wait, what? No, I said the wrong thing, and I said prostitute parlor. It was... <laughs> it's... Because, you know, that happens in normal conversation. We're normal people. What are you talking about? I'm don't talking even, about the prostitute don't parlor, man. Of it. I regularly get my hair cut in the prostitute parlor. Into that sort of thing. No, no. Um, so, yeah, there's stuff happening in the game. Jace has taken revive. I very much know he switched it back. He's a villain. He's. I, that was my one thing to talk about. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how to cope. What's going on? Um, no, so, dog. No, let's not go there. So, no, we're not going there. Raven picking up the cleanse. Uh, let's take a look at the, the match. Oh, that, that is actually a ton of C C C probably mainly from a Moo Moo that he's trying to get out of that in uh, the team fight stages. And, and meanwhile, Barsum, you have Tarek in those trades. That's going to be super useful. Again, for Ensure, that makes a lot of sense. He does also have the Arcane Shift to be times that well. He can get out of the Zen of Blade or, you know, a lot of uh, Leona's skill shots. So. But it's going to be interesting, very aggressive. Uh, meanwhile, in mid, I'd probably guess it would be Vlad versus Rumble. I'm going to guess that they're uh, probably going to put Shen... Oh, wait, no, he's Jungle. Okay, Jace. Jace versus Rumble. Interesting matchup, actually. Yeah, I ha I'd actually give it, give the edge to Rumble on that, because Jace's mm. play style, where he likes to 
get in, do a little bit of burst damage uh, with that, either, the, well, either his Q or his E, uh, in range form for the Q and hammer form for the E, um, and then, you know, just back out and get away. A lot of that damage is going to be mitigated by Rumble, who might put, like, two points into Scrap Shield and then leave it at that. Uh, and even if he is doing that, it's not going to turn off the Flame Spitter while that's going on. So Rumble will just kind of have this constant burn going on all the time when Jace is trying to get aggressive. And people think that uh, Jace's um, damage is, you know, his range, sorry, is is high in range form, but it's actually only, I think, 500, his auto attack range, which, compare that to an AD carry, that's 50 less range. That's not going to give him a massive advantage over um, over Rumble, because Flame Spitter is probably significantly longer, actually, I'd say. I don't know what the cone is exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's like an entire Teemo range, and that's quite significant. <laughs> the Teemo measurement. The Teemo measurement. It's official. Yeah. <laughs> you it's can't official. deny it. There's no way out of it now. Teemos are the measurement of lol. But I'm going to be looking at these team compositions now. Um, and I've got to say, I think I prefer IGN's team here. I mean, they have some serious AoE going on here. And what's more, they have the ability with that Kale. Um, they have the ability to... Lock, to, to have someone dive in, to have a Mumu, for instance, dive right into the middle of the enemy team. But there's not much they can do about it, because if they get him low, they could just KL ult. So he's going to be probably sticking around doing actually quite a lot of damage, because Mumu does quite a lot of damage if he's left alive for a long time. Um, but they're left with this, this Catch-22, where if they focus him, he'll get... Oh, Catch-22. I always use Catch-22 wrong, but this, this <laughs> unfortunate situation where if they focus him down, they're not going to achieve anything by it, and they're going to waste a lot of cooldowns, and then obviously the follow-up, because he'll still get his ult off, Rumble following that up, then Kale will run in, doing a lot of AoE damage with her E, Ezreal ult, Tarek ult, Shatter, I guess, bit of AoE anyway from him, and obviously Tarek's ult favors AoE compositions anyway, because that aura will apply to everyone then using their ults. Uh, <clears throat> whereas, uh, whereas Cerna uh, kind of running... Hmm, they do have some decent AoE. I mean, they have Draven ult, they have uh, Leona ult, they have Vlad ult. But I feel like they're going to be weaker in a straight-up fight. And there's also, the, again, that KL ult to consider, which is such a game-changer, because it can just make someone right into the middle of that, uh, that huge AoE and just not, not worry about it. Having someone who can just tank through it is pretty much the counter to an AoE composition. Um, and obviously, KL guarantees you will have someone by level 6. So, they do have a lot of CC, and they do have some pretty good picking potential and burst damage, though. So, they could definitely play that right, and obviously, you can never account for how well the lanes are going to do. Yeah, but on, on that uh, sort of point, the IGN team, they have really nice laning phases. Like, they basically have two laning bullies, as my client decides to crash. And bot lane <laughs> is very, very difficult to pin down. Like, it's an, it's an aggressive lane, it's an engaged lane, much like the uh, Draven Leona, but if they want to be defensive, they can be defensive. So, either way, I, it's, it's difficult, really, unless they get severely outplayed, for them really to, uh, for, for rather, the uh, Cernus to snowball out of control. They have a lot of measures in place to kind of stop that from happening. And as long as they just kind of just wait it out, play it cool, get into that mid-game, and then just go for those team fights where the composition is really sort of designed for it. I, I just like all stages of the transition that uh, that IGN has. But again, you can never account exactly. It's a sort theory crafting, and you can't you know know exactly how it's going to go down. Good war, Aether Winkale and Sad Robot Amumu versus Full Battle Jace. As much as I feel Aether Winkale is is a little bit lackluster because she constantly says forward, forward, for. for Forward. 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 Every 15 seconds or so. And it, <laughs> ah, it, it is still a nice looking skin though. Yes. And obviously, you know, one skin versus two, and one of them is a legendary, so... Yeah, but, you know, the annoyance factor is on the level of, you know, Nunu bots, so... <laughs> this this can be demotivational. Yeah, they, they did nerf. Like, they would have had the ultimate. What you would have needed was... I know they didn't exist at the same time, but you needed the hidden passive on Sad Robot and Mumu's laugh that it used yeah. to have where, where it was heard globally, which was amazing, by the way. Um, and, and also having, you know, Aetherwing Kale, and then you have Nunubot, and you just have them laugh, or say forward, alternately. I mean, <laughs> you can more or less just, just inter interchange forward with 
any word you choose in, in Kale's vocabulary. Still, let's be looking at them Protoss wings. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, this is Cerna versus IGN, and we are just about to get underway. Things going down. Indeed. So the support will be picking up fairly standard builds. I don't see anything uh, completely out of the blue. Uh, Tarek actually going quite deep into the fellow stone route this early on. Only got one ward right there. And got a bit of sustain, obviously, from the health potion and the biscuit. But the end's going to have been just more warding cover, uh, especially with the Explorer Ward as well, which Tarek has just decided not to get. Biscuit, but no Explorer Ward. Peculiar. I, I feel like Explorer Ward is too useful to pass up for one mastery point, but we might be seeing a fight and we could, here. Yeah, we could see a team fight opening up very, very quickly as Rumble meets Draven. This could be a very dead, very dead Draven. He will be picked up, was ignited as well, and that will be first blood picked up by Kevin. Oh, yeah, Kevin, who will be Tarek. Tarek's going to be uh, very happy with his early pillow stone. Yeah, uh, going deep into that tree has really won out for him there. Actually, I'm not sure he has quite enough gold. Um, I think you need 520. Yeah, he's just going to pick up. Ah, he's got wards now. <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> it, it, it worked out. <laughs> just it worked the out. plan. <laughs> the plan has come together. Yep. So, all right. Well, that worked out pretty well for, for IGN there. I think maybe Cerner just didn't expect IGN to move so promptly. I mean, they just got off the spawn pad a little bit quicker, ran to that tri brush, um, misplaced a ward, although that will sort of cover if Shen tries to do a level 2 gank, or... I don't know, whatever. That, that <laughs> ward there is just going to be there, and, and nobody knows exactly why. But, uh, yeah, so that's actually worked out pretty well for them. But Tarek obviously getting said is not quite the ideal situation. You can't... Tarek is quite funny though if he does get very fed because he becomes a raid boss and just you just can't kill him. Yeah. When he has all that free armor from his shatter and then radiance regeneration, it's just crazy. But anyway, and we are actually going to be seeing Vlad versus Rumble Top. In deed. And also to go back to the Tarek points, Tarek really scales well from levels. Shatter equals more armor equals you can't kill him ever. Anyway, so we have Rumble versus Vlad. Right now Vlad's not going to have a super fun time. He's got a nice harass from his Q. Might have that up in Rumble at the moment. Obviously he's ranged as well. Rumble putting the points, uh, first points of course in Electro Harpoon. Great for farming, great for just a little bit of harass as well. And in fact just getting blocked by those melee minions. So I think we'll see more action as he gets to sort of level 3, level 5. Those are the sort of big points for Rumble where he gets that Q or an extra point in, uh, or a single point in W where he can really start to close with them. And Vlad gets strong at the kind of level 9 area. So Rumble will have the advantage early on into the game. Kind of interested about this middle matchup of Kale and uh, of Jace though. Yeah, but we are seeing Hat Person maybe looking for a gank here. He has got bandage toss. Got the double buff as well. Flash up. I wouldn't be Could surprised if he goes for the flash into the bandage toss. Meanwhile, we have Shen on his blue buff. Here we go. Hat Person looking for this to happen. Acceleration gate goes down and no CC is going to land. Not going to happen today. And this is the thing with Jason in general. He's very, very difficult to pin down. That acceleration gate, especially in mid we got a have an initiation onto Tim Fizzer. And we have a nice stun from Kevin, just keeping him away. And again, that, and Leona likes to be aggressive early on to the game, and just at least showing that presence so Edward just can't get comfortable. <clears throat> yeah, it's you have to. Yeah, you have to establish presence um, as as a support. Uh, 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 the wi a wise man once told me on stream, very, and then then that video got reposted many many times. But yeah. Uh, you have to make people fear you, essentially, as Tarek and Leon. You have to show that you're willing to get aggressive um, if you if they Meanwhile, do have We do have Rum getting hella aggressive onto Pure Strikes. Another Flame Spitter comes down. Does he have the Ignites already on cooldown, however? He must have used that very early on. Ah, I guess he must have used it on Draven at the uh, level 1 fight. Oh, yeah, that makes, a lot of, that. that makes a lot of sense. Um, but, yeah, like I say, you have to kind of establish this presence. And what that actually means is you make them fear you. You make them... You show that if you engage on them, it's going to hurt a lot. So they actually back out and then you Blast, know, this was a terrible decision. The guy goes down and Baron would be picking up that kill. <laughs> wow, I'm kind of surprised he went back in Meanwhile, Boston, we do have another trade as Tim Fizzer gets locked down along with Draven. Both exhausts coming down. The flash from the Draven once again. And that will be Leona and Edgewell picking up a kill. Both... At the very same time, Kevin just kind of warding the owner off, but neither really, neither really supports have uh, that much killing potential. Yeah, well, Tarek well, can do a bit of damage. Yeah, he's going for it. Leona doesn't really have much damage without that sunlight proc. Um, 
But yeah, like I say, uh, establishing presence, you just kind of have to make people fear you. And actually we're seeing a Moomoo coming in mid, hat person, he does still have bandage toss up, uh, reckoning lands, flashing out of the way of the bandage toss, flash burn for Jace there. So, establishing presence, <laughs> too much action, stop doing things players, please. Um, but yeah, it's make them fear you, and essentially you don't have to then spend the mana engaging on them, you can just zone them out because they'll be like, oh, I don't want to get Leonid. That, that is I don't want to get Leonid, the technical term. Yeah. Have you never been Leonid? Yeah, I'll tell you, it's a lot of fun experience. So I'll, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, well, I, I, we, we actually play Leona quite a lot down, See, down, yeah. down, down in bot lane, and a moon possibly coming in mid again. What does it happen? That person! We have the queue going down and the forwards coming from Kale. Outstanding. Oh, Young Bang Bang will be turning this one around, just popping down the hammer, and he will be turning this one around. I don't think he can do anything though. He's just going to be slowly chunked down, and we all have Kale picking up that kill. Rumble also head, heading down with pure strikes. He will be locking onto him though. Pop down both tasers with the flame spitter as well. Chunking him down very slowly. Probably not going to pick up the kill. Has time for himself, but at least going to. Uh, keep him down. Actually, he might go for this tower dive. doesn't have six, however, but that will keep him quite suppressed. Yeah, and what you're seeing there is just Rumble versus Vlad. R Vlad does not... He has neither the ability to avoid the damage, nor, do, nor the sustain to sustain through it, and he doesn't have the damage to actually damage trade, so he's just in this horrible situation where there's not a lot he can do, and Tarek, making next level plays there, stuns Draven to stop him picking up his axe. Uh, which may not be mana efficient in the long run, but it is amusing to watch. Indeed. And it's going to be fairly frustrating for Draven, because as a Draven player, it's just, uh, you want those axes. Uh, yeah. Like, I don't want to spend that, what, 45 mana that I have 450 of. No. Because because all my all the rest of my kit uses so much. To be fair, actually, Draven can chew through mana pretty quickly if he's getting those spinning axes because Blood Rush resets. And if you want to get aggressive on people, it actually looks like pings are going down at bot. Shen is down there. Yeah, that's all gone down from Tarek as well. That's going to be on cooldown just for another nine seconds. Not really a window of opportunity that uh, Shen's going to be able to use, however. And they are fairly pushed up to the turret as well. Shen might get something done, but it's it's going to be one a long time investment and two quite dodgy this close to the turret. Tarek fairly tanky at the moment, Ezreal. He will be face checking, however. Shadow Dash goes in. A lot of that's coming down, but it's Tarek. He's still alive and kicking about 30% down at the moment. Warble Blade coming down. Ultimate from Draven. Good side step by Kevin, keeping himself alive. Hat person just around the area, stopping the tower dive. Meanwhile, top, we do have Baron just laying into pure strikes. Once again, forcing the sanguine pull. Ultimate goes down as well, locking him against the side, and the flame spitter will pick that one up. Inescapable. And yeah, that was just Tarek dot gif if you wanted to make a gif out of it so so tanky three people unable to bring him down uh it helps probably that he's going i think for an early locket uh picked up the cloth armor and the rejuvenation bead so he's going to be just retard ridiculously uh tanky there i mean i i wonder how much armor he has at the moment 112 so he was smart in that engagement he didn't use his shatter which would have reduced his armor um but as it is, he's just walking back into lane, pretty much, pretty much happy with how things are. Wanting guys yeah. to pick up on Rumble as well. Eric just staying fabulous. So at the top, Rumble having a nice time against Vlad. Honestly, got two kills from that, and Vlad really can't do anything. And this was kind of to be expected. Lane bully versus Vlad. Vlad does not really cope well. Doesn't have the graces of laning phases, and stacking up maybe two of those Doran shields just isn't viable versus a Rumble. Swap this up makes a lot more sense. Lane now against Kale, but again, it's another lane bully, and Kale's just not going to make um, make Vlad have a fun time. He's not going to reach level nine or, or that sort of area where he gets his strength. Yeah, honestly, I f I'm not sure I like this swap up because to me it just seems like they're afraid of Rumble snowballing out of control. But the thing is, he's kind of already out of control. I mean, Shebang Bang is is doing all right, and it seems like maybe he's going to do okay. Um, he is just he did just win that little trade off there. We do have the owner engaging on bot lane. I don't think anyone's going to happen though. Tarek just again. Being fabulous, we do have Hat Person looking to land the Q and a good flash from Draven. I think that actually would have been max range, so good prediction play. Yeah, it was. It's it's something you you know where he's going to throw it, but if you 
tome react, it's it's going to hit you anyway, and that's horrible for you. Um, and we're seeing right now, Rumble, probably his biggest weakness as a character, is farming under tower. Right now, he's losing a lot of creeps here. This is this is a little bit painful. Um, I hope he does all right. And actually, we've got the uh, stun going in from Hat Person. Not able to follow it up, though, too close to the tower. He's got has gone down, though. So we've got this follow-up here. Exhaust has gone down onto Draven. Stun onto Ezreal. But Hat Person still alive, still tanky. And Brownie Town here is looking to get aggressive, but I'm not sure he has the means to kill Tim Fizzer. Not that they really have the means to kill him either at the moment. Perhaps not, though. Yeah, Shen just returning just to kind of pick up a couple of the creeps. So it goes to a good cause. But that was so aggressive from a hat person. It's kind of on the edge of the uh, Curse of the Sad Mummy as well. Really well played, knowing the sort of range of your skills, because there's no indicator for that thing. Yeah, it, it was just, it was really well executed and good follow up from his bottom lane. And that's the nice thing with having, you know, sort of aggressive bot lane, because it does allow you to gank so, so easily. And well, yeah. if you have a Vladimir, you can't really do anything. Yeah, you, what you really want, your ideal lane as a jungler is a lane that, that doesn't push that hard, that has a lot of CC and has a lot of burst damage. I mean, that, I don't know if there are any lanes that are quite that amazing, but but certainly those three factors, the more of those you have and the stronger you have them, the better you're going to be doing, essentially. Because Amumu, Amumu isn't traditionally thought of as a ganking jungler, but he's stronger than a lot of people think. Uh, and Ezreal ult going down mid there. Picked up a creep. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, and he's pushing top lane, too. Um, so, a little bit of damage going down onto the creeps there. But yeah, like I say, Amumu, not the s typically a ganking jungler, but he is generally pretty strong, actually. Uh, if you... His CC, obviously, once he hits level 6, it becomes a different ball game if he has his ult up, because that thing is amazing no matter what situation you're in. But even pre-6, his, his ganks are surprisingly strong. Fair bit of burst on him, actually. It's, it's, it's sort of confusing, because he does that damage with his W, and actually yeah, we, got so we do in. have the trade between Baron and Shabang Bang. We do have the ultimate coming in from the Shen as well. He will be turning this one around and forcing Baron back, but half person coming in as well, picking up the kill. Uh, on to Rumble, but he probably won't be able to do anything to that person, unable to save his friend, and Jace will just be returning to farm. So, they are doing something, and they are trying their best to strip Rumble down, but meanwhile, at the, in the rest of the board, everyone's just kind of getting slightly ahead, and I feel this is only going to be exaggerated when he gets to mid-game, and we do have Leona initiating onto Tim Fizzer, of course, Arcane Shift will keep him alive, but the ultimate coming down as well, really aggressive cleanse out as well. And of course that is a longer cooldown, so that could open up opportunities later into the game. Yeah, that's really, it's worth it from Leon. And meanwhile, mid lone pioneer may be taken down by the X Knight. Yeah, he will fall. Kale just trying to get out of here. It goes as being popped by pure strikes and we have an angry jizz returning from the other side. Ultimate going down, keeping himself alive for a couple of seconds. Half person coming in, popping down curse of sad mummy. Should be able to pick up the kill onto shot bang by not gonna happen. Good flash out of there. And Pure Strikes just following them up. If Hat Person isn't careful, he could also be taken down. So Bang Bang, dicing with death. We have Rumble coming in from behind as well. And Pure Strikes eating a hasty retreat. Hat Person wants blood. He will be he will be leaving there. Shebang, very nice to well, predict. Well, Baron, he shot. doesn't have ultimate, but he will be looking for the tower dive. Flames but it goes down. We'll be picking up this kill. Pure Strikes probably not going to be able to trade with him if he lures him away from the turret, though. And the Ethereal World's been going up. Yeah, that was really nice usage of Scrap Shield there. I mean, just knowing that you could tank that damage from the tower. And here we've got Pure Strikes going in against Baron von Richthofen, but can't really take that damage. He is, however, supported by Shen, and it looks like the Baron has forced to pop his ult. He might yet get out of this. Harpoon are going to keep him safe. Harpoon, yeah. But, yeah, so... I, my own grammar, yes. And Hat Person still coming in here, Bandage Cross goes down, Pure Strikes taking the damage, he's gone down, smacked in the face with a, with a mace. mace to what face? is that thing? I, it's a, I, I think I you guess can classify a... that as a mace. Yeah. It's a robot mace. Mecha mace. Yeah. <coughs> Close enough. Mecha mace TM. Pulse 2012. Pulse 2013. Yeah, I, this is sad because my stock jokes involving, involving TM 2012 have now become wrong. And 2013 doesn't sound as nice. It, it, well, obviously there's a whole thing with uh, the world ending in 2012, which we don't really have, which was 2013. I'm, I'm sure someone will find some something from the Aztecs which secures our doom. 
at some point during yeah, the year. Yeah, well, I think it was Mayans actually for 20, 2012. It'll be Aztecs but this year. Just I think it. it was. I think it was more like people forgot that the simplest explanation is usually the best one, and um, laziness is a pretty good explanation that's pretty simple. <laughs> they didn't bother to calendar out for like hundred. 100 years. Yes, the Mayans only ended about 100 years ago. Uh, did you know? True fact. Did you know? True fact, TM. Registered trademark. Um, but, <laughs> about what's going on in the game, uh, Rumble has picked up a giant spell and the Haunting Guys as well, so they're making pretty tanky and going quite heavy in against Jace here, who has knocked him out from under the tower. He's overheated here. He's not going to win this trade-off. Jace hits him with a Q in the back. He has gone down. That's, de that's a dead Rumble. It was a very dead rumble. Um, yeah. I'm honestly not entirely sure why he went for that trade. I guess he thought he was stronger. He was 4-1 at that stage. Had the ultimate. Move our bottom hat person looking for this going to happen. Has Curse of the Sad Mummy as well. Be looking to use this. Lands the balance toss as well. And it will be landing on Draven. He should get the kill onto Brownlee Town with Tim Fizzer. He's completely out of mana, but Shen teleporting in as well. He should be able to get out of there. And he might be able to turn this around onto Kevin Knock. Uh, he's, he's tanky though. It's, it's, it's Herrick. He's too fabulous to die. Too fabulous to die. He cannot possibly die against someone so unfabulous. But that works. That, that is how it is literally. HP is actually short for her fabulousness. I, I, I was going to come mm -hmm. up with a pun, yep. and I couldn't. But, so yeah, uh, Rumble actually, in spite of being very tanky, apparently he can't keep up with Jace's damage, and that might partly be due to the CS difference between them at the moment. I mean, Jace is actually 3 and 2 himself. Uh, 115 CS to 73, so the gold difference between them, yeah, Jace is actually now significantly ahead, about 600 gold. Brutalizer, Vamp Scepter, and yeah, Rumble has built fairly tanky. I think he's probably looking to get a strong presence in these team fights, and Rumble needs to be tanky in a team fight. Uh, if he's in a team fight and he's too squishy, it's very, very easy for him to focus him out because his range is so short for a mage. So if he gets a little bit tankier, his damage in an entire team fight situation is probably going to exceed Jace's, depending on how many acceleration shot blasts, uh, shot blasts that Jace manages to land, which which do hurt a lot and do do a decent little AOE. But if he's hitting only you know one or two in a fight, it's nothing compared to you know Flame Spitter, which can hit three or four people, and the Equalizer, which can hit as many as are set up for him to hit. In D Baron. Maybe not the best of life decisions. Shen coming in behind you. We do have Stan Sai coming in as well. Locked down by Leona. I think that was a fail flash. And now he's just completely pinned down as they get picked up. Ultimate coming down from Leona. Whiffs it. Lands just behind Tim Fizz. He might be able to reclaim a kill here. One more auto attack will do it. Shatter not gonna happen. Shibanga Man coming in from the side. Lands the shock blast for the acceleration game. Hat person looking to send this one around. He does have he doesn't have his ultimate rather. Looking maybe to land the Bounce Toss, lands it, he still has Sanguine Pull, there it goes. They may be looking for the Tower Dive. We do have the ultimate, that being Intervention. Lone Pioneer just kind of backing off, and that should be the end of the hostilities for now. Oh, well, just wants Kale. To Kale. Yeah, just trading off a little bit there. Uh, and now we have Dravenolt. Hello Dravenolt. So, what we're seeing here, actually, Jace may be looking to come around. No, it has gone down though. Trying to keep them away from the turret lane. Pioneer, <laughs> not a good position. Pure Strikes may be taking some damage. Half person in the fray once again does have the ultimate, lands it. Brownlee Town just trying to get into, into the deep end of the enemy team, resulting in a 2 and 0 trade and the turret. Very aggressively, you know. Yeah, and. <laughs> I'm surprised. It's, it's that team composition essentially that we're seeing there. That AoE just bomb that hits right in the middle of the enemy team. I mean, all those different sources of AoE damage. Yeah, so much right now it. we could see some sound being caught. They might want this to happen. Lazar Balance starts right onto Walshi. What are you going to do? Sanguine Pool comes down from Pure Strikes, but Baron has overheated Harbor. He does have the Harpoon ready. Flash from Kale will secure that kill. The Flash forward. I'm sorry. The Flash forward. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> Terrible show, by the way. Don't watch it. <laughs> I've never seen it. I didn't even. I forgot it was even. A sh but yeah. So, I think part of the problem, though, from the perspective of Cerna, is just that Vlad got so destroyed in lane. I mean, he. Everyone else on their team. Okay, Draven isn't doing great, but he's got some farm. You know, he's not. He's actually ahead of Ezreal on farm. Uh, he's. You know, he's got his major item. He's got Bloodthirsty. He's going to be picking up Zeal fairly shortly. 
But Vlad is still sitting on a haunting guise and sork shoes. He is neither tanky nor damaging right now. And that's that's not a situation you really want to be in. I mean, he's not doing nothing, but compared to compared to Rumble, compared to Kale, he's just not doing anything on the same league in ter- league, sorry, in terms of damage, because he just he had horrible matchups for both of his lanes effectively. And I don't know what his plan is to counter that. I think going for magic penetration is probably the best option. Uh, which he is doing, he's picked up that sor- Sorcerer's Shoes and, and Haunting Guys. But there is just that risk that he's not gonna really get to a point where he's a major threat. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, right now, farm isn't going well for him, kills aren't going well for him, he's got one assist. He's so low right now on the gold count. There's gonna be going ahead and seeding mid as well, that being from IGN. And there's not much they can do about it. Right now, we have a Moon's Ultimate coming up in about 14 seconds. This will allow them to open up a team fight. Maybe not under a turret, but right now, Cerner is split. They can't really stop this from happening. Uh, stop this from happening. Brandy Town looking for the initiate. They want something to happen. Half Herx is coming in from the side. Ultimate coming down from Leona as well. We have the Ultimate coming in from Baron, locking everyone down. Huge AoE damage. They've planned to force him away from the turret, picking up three kills in quick succession. And that was basically the opposite of what Cerner wanted. Yeah, that was just a perfect fight for IGN. It was that small area where they were constricted because of the um, uh, because of the trees and the and the, uh, and the wall. So. They had the choice of, of either losing maybe two of their members or trying to engage, and in which case they get caught in the AoE cluster bomb and mostly end up dead anyway. And it looks like after that inhib, IGN are maybe thinking about Baron? Possibly? Yeah, it looks like it. They're going to go for it. Always the issue with going for Baron is the fact that you open up the opportunity for uh, the enemy team, that being Senna in this case, for potentially stealing it. But I don't think they've actually... Well, they know they're there, they walk past the wards. Vladimir's going to be leading the charge, but Vladimir, as we've already established, is not the strongest of uh, vanguards. And that will be the Baron picked up. This could be a very nasty situation for Cerner once again. Draven has been caught. Kalens has gone down. Flash from Tarek. Too fabulous. Lone Pioneer coming in from the side as well. Only lands this turn onto, lone, uh, onto half person. Another kill goes down onto Lone Pioneer. And they should be back up now. Pure Strike actually leading the charge back into the fray forward you could say and that'll be a one-to-one -one trade yeah and that one-to-one -one trade in spite of the difference between the teams is basically because IGN got a little bit hasty there they just they saw that pick they saw they could potentially pick someone up without having to really expend that much on them they didn't quite manage to get it quick enough though and they ended up in a full-on fight so because they are so far ahead in spite of the fact they had used all their cooldowns used a lot of mana lost a lot of health in that previous team fight and Baron they still managed to actually come out equal, which is kind of a testament to just how strong they are right now. Uh, that Baron buff is going to be, you know, this is their power play time. They can, they can probably push towers. They can probably die towers at this point. Uh, I mean, a Mumu has 138 armor, 2,400 health. You, they are probably at a position here where they could think about diving. I mean, Tarek, 165 armor. Um, yeah, I would not be surprised if they. Those two outer towers, top and bottom, are probably going to go down. Uh, though it looks like at the moment they're just going to be pushing out the lanes, which obviously is is a, is a necessity if you're going to be pushing down towers. Um, but uh, yeah, I would not be surprised to see them push those outer towers and just to be very difficult for Cerner to respond to that. Yeah, and they'll be pushing these lanes in, and then they'll just pick a lane. And they'll also have the other two lanes pushing in, purely because you have that inhibitor down, the other lanes get stronger. You're going to have to send someone to deal with it, and if you if IGN sends someone over to split push, uh, you have some really strong duelists. You have Rumble, you have Kale. They're really in their prime time at the moment, strong in the mid-game. And there's no one really to deal with that, maybe Jace, but you're sacrificing one of the key players in your team fight. And when it's only going, well, it's going badly anyway, this is not something you want to sacrifice. And it puts them in a really, really horrible position. They will be seeding this top turret, and if they get engaged upon, they might just want to kind of back off, just loop around, go for that bottom turret, play it safe. They don't need to make players, but they can do. They have Baron buff if they're going to. That person does have the ultimate along with Rumble, and, and in fact, the owner will be initiating once again, fairly away from the turret, and the owner just gets exploded. The Shen in turn two for zero so far, all they're going down by Ezreal clearing that wave. 
and the inhibitor turret will be falling. Yeah, and I'm afraid that was going to be actually we're seeing how Rumble following this up. Pure Strike going to be going down to the Rumble ult. And Draven chased away, had to flash out. Looks like this could actually be the end of the game right here. 6 for 20, I'm not too surprised. But that last team fight was just Cerner being aware of how horrible of a situation they were caught in. They knew they couldn't really team fight, but they knew they had to make something happen before they lost another in him, or they were doomed. And they couldn't hold out, they didn't have the wave clear. So they fought, and they lost. Yoda couldn't make a good enough engagement. I'm not sure it would have been possible to make a good enough engagement, no. to be honest, because they were, they were, it was a really horrible situation for them. Um, but yeah, very nicely played from IGN, and I think they really just took control of that game from a very early stage. Yeah, I mean, they had these lanes which had a huge snowball potential, and I already spoke about it before, and, and the fact that bot lane, even if they fell behind, they can just play it safe. And there was no real matchup for Vlad to have a nice time. And Baron on Rumble <laughs> just got ridiculously scary very, very quickly. And they couldn't do anything about Kale, who was just going to scale really well into the mid-game, late-game anyway. In fact, went for the Nash of Tooth and the Zephyr, which is a kind of interesting build. But either way, had the goal to, to supplement it. So, yeah, o overall, very, very difficult to play against. Not quite convinced it was maybe won in picks, but it made it a lot easier for IDN to really snowball that advantage if they made one in the early game. Yeah, there just wasn't much counter in the picks for Cerner to an AoE composition. I mean, they didn't have that Janna, they didn't have that Gragas to split everything up. They didn't have a disengage other than maybe a Leona ultimate, and it just wasn't reliable enough. Yeah. Also, something to note is the fact that IGN and Cerner on the scoreboard, they got the, uh, the, the wrong way round. I always find that difficult to say. So apologies for that, if that caused confusion, because uh, honestly, if I was watching, I'd be extremely confused. So, yeah. I, I don't know. But anyway, that was IGN vs. Cerner for casting for AHGL by Pulse and Spuddington.